Welcome back to Fast Monty's Garage. Today we get to talk about bump steer in your 64 through 72 GM A body. It doesn't matter if it's a Chevelle, 442, GTO. All the A bodies are covered because we are all born with this problem. So what is bump steer? Well, let me tell you a story. If you're new to the channel, check out my last video, killer uh, cruise we did in Southern California. On my way there, I was on the freeway. I may have been exceeding the speed limit. I don't remember, but on the fast lane, the curve in the road and a dip caused my suspension to travel and the car darted towards the center divider. Yeah, I thought I was gonna die. So thank God I corrected, but that's exactly what bump steer is. When your front suspension has uh, travel in it and it goes up and down, your wheels will actually pivot because of poor geometry. We're gonna fix that today. It's actually a relatively simple fix that Global West came up with is a new control arm that has slightly different geometry in it. So we're gonna cover that. But before I hit the workbench and show you what's involved in this kit, subscribe, because there's plenty more videos like this to come and it's free for you to do. It doesn't cost you anything. And if you don't have a YouTube account, that's really simple to set up because once you have an account, you can leave comments and help everyone out here because throughout this video, I'll be asking for other experts like you guys to chime in on what different parts might look like on your car. Now, if you have a Gmail account, it's the same login and password because Google owns YouTube. Yeah, scary, right? Buy some of their stock while you're at it. Oh, speaking of buying stuff, FMG hats are here. Link below. Check it out. Let's go hit the workbench and see what's up. So this is what comes with the kit. Instructions, your arms, and some bolts and nuts to accommodate several different lengths and sizes. Now, what you need to pay attention to are the arms. They're clearly different. One is for passenger side and one is for driver's side. It's denoted by a number. See that one says 102? That is for the driver's side. The other one says 101. So if you wanna put some tape on there, right? Driver's side, passenger side, knock yourself out. But let me show you the difference between a stock arm and these new arms. So on the right, this is a stock arm. This is the new arm. The differences are very subtle. If you, if you already notice right here, there's an angle change for the stock one. And here's the new one. It's rotated a little bit. And then end view, you can see a slight height difference. So if I were to line up the holes, all right, so I put a bolt through each just to line them up for you, but there's a little elevation change too. So that being level, you can see there's a difference here on the new one. So that's the subtlety that we're going after. There's another view of it. And uh, let's go jump back over to the car to show you how to remove everything. All right, guys, before I start tearing stuff apart, I forgot to mention something. This uh, bump steer issue actually affects drag cars too, because it's called tire scrub. When, when your drag car actually launches, you have a really soft front suspension to get the rear planted, right? So when that suspension goes to full travel, your tires can tow in as much as a quarter inch. Yeah, a quarter inch, and they're dragging on the ground, losing you time. So that's how this is gonna help you guys. Now, for those of us that are set up for like autocross and track, the problem is exacerbated. I don't even know what that word means. It's worsened <laughs> when you uh, increase the caster. So those of us that have tubular A-arms like me, like right, this is Global West tubular A-arms, um, there is more caster built in for improved high speed stability and better turn in on turns. Now that makes bumpster even worse because you're now uh, more aggressively changing the geometry. So this new kit solves that for both of us. And if you don't believe me, go check out, sorry, over here, just over here, wherever that link is to check out Global West's video they did on full suspension travel and they measured the toe change before and after really cool so let's get to this unfortunately for you guys that have drums you have to take those off we have to take the discs off but disc brakes are easier to take off and while you're at it you might want to consider upgrading your drums to disc for safety uh, so today if you guys are wondering what these are these are huge right they're 14 inch diameter will woods six piston calipers i love them they now have a 15 inch kit which is 
crazy to think about. Maybe one day I'll upgrade to those. Uh, in the back here, you can see I have Global West tubular upper and lower A arms and maybe a QA1 shock. You might be able to see coil over. So that's my setup. Now it's very simple for me. I have two bolts on the caliper in the back here. I'll show you in a second. If you have stock uh, front disc brakes, which probably 69 and up, I'm thinking, I don't remember, but please leave a comment below if whatever car you have, how you take your drum off to give everyone else help or your calipers. If I recall, there are two bolts that go through the caliper on, um, on disc front, stock front disc cars. So let's get at it. All right, for Willwood calipers, there are two studs with two nuts on them. They're 12 point nuts, lock nuts. So let's take them off. So they look like 12 point lock nuts. Now I can just take our caliper off and set it aside. When you set it aside, make sure you don't put any strain on your current brake line. You don't have to disconnect it. Just put a nice safe spot out of the way. Now we can tackle getting our disc off. Now, although all of you should have uh, locking fasteners that keep the disc on the hub, so please, you guys with drums and uh, stock discs, leave a comment if I'm wrong, just to help everyone out. But if I recall, there were two uh, lock nuts on the, on the disc. And feel free to get, break out your liquid wrench and let them soak because I'm sure they're rusted on there. And your disc, by the way, might be rusted on, on the hub. So keep that in mind. All right, all right. So now that we have the disc off, we can now tackle our tie rod end, which will probably be the most difficult part of this whole procedure. So we have to take our cotter pin off. Oh man, that was stubborn. This is all shiny because I put some um, liquid wrench in there too, uh, depending on how long it's been since you changed your, your tie rod end. Um, you might need to have that soak for an hour or so. Mine are relatively new, I'd say five years. But now we can take that nut off. Note it's a castle nut. That's for that cotter pin to get through that gap so it won't come off. We'll cover that later. Now the fun begins. You can use a pickle fork to take this off, but I don't like using a pickle fork because that will damage this boot. These are relatively new, like I said. Um, the best thing to do is get the right tool which is this guy here. So this presses out that, that um, screw because this is a taper lock in there or some, sometimes called a Moore's taper. And that's what makes it so difficult to get out. So you gotta fit it on there and it's gonna be a close fit. So you gotta pay attention to these edges and make sure you're on both sides. I'm on there. So I want you guys to note something. If you don't own one of these, you can buy one or you can just go to AutoZone and rent one. Now something to note, when you do get one of these, mine actually is rounded on here so I cannot fit a socket, which is intentional because some of these come raw and you'd be tempted to put your impact wrench on here. Don't do that because you'll apply too much force too fast. You can shatter this or it'll just come fl flying off and hurt someone. So it's always best to use a wrench and I'm gonna slowly go at it while I monitor my fingers. They don't slip off because it's kind of a close fit and it should pop right out. Bada bam, just like that. Oh yeah, now we're getting there. Okay, the, the, the bolts you have currently probably need that liquid wrench as well. Hopefully they've been soaking overnight, but now you can use an impact wrench. So I got a wrench on the back. Front bolt, and there's a rear bolt. But a bam love that tool. And the arm should just come off just like that. Bam, off with the old, in with the new. All right, let's put the new one on. Remember I said there are numbers marking passenger side and driver side. So this is 101, that's the passenger side. And there's also a counter bore where the castle nut goes. So that's a good way to think about it too. That needs to go up. So these are the same bolts that were on my original arm. They happen to be the same length 
and thread as the new bolts in the kit. I don't have to change them out. But something that didn't come in my kit were washers, which you should always use a washer on a bolt, especially high torque bolts like these. So I'd find a washer if you don't have any in the kit. You might need your attitude adjuster. Use my uh, handy dandy impact wrench again just to zip them back on. All right, they're tightened, they're not torqued. So now we have to put 70 foot pounds of torque on each of these. Oh man, that was, that was fun. Jeez. Okay, that's in. Okay, let's get our tie rod in, put back in. Obviously, just like we took it out. So that castle nut, we need to tighten to 35 foot-pounds and then line up the slot with the hole by tightening it further. You really don't want to exceed 45 foot-pounds, but uh, we'll see how it lines up when I do it here. There we go. And let's see our alignment with our cotter pin. Hey, it happens to fit perfectly. I love it when a plan comes together. And I put it in upside down. For my upside down comment, I had it in like this. You really want to put it that way so you bend this long finger up and over the bolt. All right, there we go. All right, let's put these bad boys back on. There is a particular pattern for the lock bolts. Looks like a Y. Just like that. And I already hit this with brake cleaner, so I cleaned front and rear. And I'll probably do it one more time before I put the caliper on. And I'm using a little thread locker, just in case. Just slip your caliper back on. And there are two washers on those studs. And then we tighten our 12-point uh, lock nuts to 30 foot pounds. Bang and bang. Yes. Yeah, that was relatively easy. Oh yeah. That looks awesome. Uh, it looks the same, but it still looks awesome. <laughs> now, those of you guys have uh, newer spindles, like drop spindles or modular spindles that have the OE arm on it. Yeah, you have the bump steer problem. So take that off, go to Global West, get the right arm, or, sorry, right and left arm. I meant the correct arms and get them bolted on. If you have the modular systems that had the arm built into it, double check with the manufacturer, make sure they corrected the bump steer problem. If they didn't get it changed for safety's sake. Now, one final thing we have to discuss, and I know it's an issue for most of you guys. I had made it look super easy because my components have not been on the car very long. Most of you probably have components roasted on, and it's gonna be a pain in the ass to get them off. So do us a favor, join, make a YouTube account. If you don't have one already, leave a comment below about what tricks work best for you. So all of our brothers and sisters that have a body cars can learn from it. That's why we're here. Now, one final thing. Now that you joined YouTube, you have to subscribe, go to your subscribers list. It's free. Subscriber list has all your um, people that you follow in there and click the bell on the ones that you want notifications from. I'm not going to be crazy uh, with the videos. One video a week max. So you'll get notified. The reason I say that is we have one more critical thing to talk about. Because we changed our geometry, we have to get an alignment. I'm going to show you my favorite tool to do your own alignment at home or at the track. You can change your camber, caster, everything with this kit. It's awesome. So until next time, build them fast, drive them faster. See ya.